Morning everybody, Jeff from Cutter Masters here. This morning we're going to talk about the uh, new uh, Yen Louis YN05H. This is a pretty cool machine in that it sharpens end mills and drills from eighth inch up to three quarter. Uh, on the right hand side of the machine you'll see the drill sharpening side. There's a timing shelf. Uh, this timing shelf has a little shoe that moves in or out which governs the rotation of the drill when you sharpen it. Um, the shelves are typical to what you'll see on this type of machine. Uh, the exceptions on the new machine uh, and the improvements are they have settable pins here which can govern your point geometry when you're doing your back split. And also this is an adjustable shelf so if you've got a harder material you can back the tool up a little bit and uh, leave a little more material on center give you a tougher tip. The typical angle adjustment goes from 90 to 140 degrees so you can do spot drills or drills for plastic or up to hard material with the fly wrangle. Left hand side of the machine with a separate timing shelf is for your know, timing your end mills. Improvements are they have this locking screw so when you put your your collet chuck in you would line this up to uh, loop number one and then you can lock the chuck when you put your tool in to prevent it from creeping. So uh, Quickly here we'll do a demo to sharpen a four fluke carbide end mill. Um, what happens in this process is you put the tool in, the number one facing you, you put the number one, this is an adjustable slider depending on the width of your tool. We're going up to three quarters so we'll put it up towards the top. Tighten that up so it doesn't move. Put tooth number one on this side where well, you're looking at number one here. So we will do that. Pick, your, pick a nice crisp tooth. If the corner is missing, missing, it'll screw up the timing. So you want to, once you're happy that you've got the tooth timed up against this face back here, then snug this up, this locking screw, and then tighten the collet a little bit. And then pull it out. Make sure that the flutes are square with these squares that are on the collet chuck. And then if you're happy with that, Make sure that it's tight. And then uh, come over to your timing shelf. <coughs> or your, um, your gashing shelf. This is the gashing shelf here. The secondary is back here and the primary is down here. We're going to do the gash and flutes one and three first. This arrow is, the one goes towards the arrow. Uh, numbers are on your chuck faces. So just put that in there, get it close. You don't have to press on it, it'll drop all by itself. Okay, <clears throat> so we've gashed loops one and three. Now we're going to raise the shelf a little bit, of about six millimeters, and we're going to do flutes two and four. So the two is facing the pin. Just drop it in, don't press down on the shelf. Flip around, do flute four. So now you've created the beginnings of your center cut geometry. Now we're going to do the secondary. Secondary is around back. I'll turn the machine so you can see it easier. You just go around each flute. Oh, before you start this, just make sure that your shelves are clean. This that you create a lot of dust when you're grinding large tools. So just go around. No particular sequence. Notice I have the machine aiming away from me too. A lot of this dust is just going out that port. So. They're all the same. So as long as it's nice and quiet, you know that you can see your lines. <laughs> That looks good. So now we're going to do the primary. Primary is done here for all two, three, four, and six flute tools. It just goes in this port. Once again, we make sure that's clean without grinding the end of our finger on. Come into this port and just plunge it gently until it's quiet. Just go around each flute exactly the same.
and that's your uh, four-fluid center cutting tool.